Uh, good morning, uh, listeners or students. I'm saying good morning because it's in the morning, uh, 9.46, 8 seconds. Now, um, in this uh, question, it's a question on the statement of cash flow, uh, which is cash flow statement or statement of cash flows. And in this cash flow statement, it is at a third year level uh, in a university of technology. Uh, to other institutions, it might be at second year, it will differ uh, from institution to the other institution. But there are so many common things, honestly, about cash flow. Now, uh, I will, as usual, most of the times, uh, begin reading what we are required. First, we are provided with the trial balance. And in the trial balance, it is made clear that if it's in brackets, it indicates a credit. And um, if obviously it's positive, that will be an indication that uh, it is a debit account. We are given uh, the information which says the following is an extract from the annual financial statements of Xmas Limited for the year that end on the 30th of June in the year 2007. So the accounting period ends on 30th June each and every year. But this one ending 2007 as our focus here. We are given all this information, which could be a trial balance uh, sometimes, but it is extracted from the financial statements. Now we are provided again with the information that is extracted from the statement of profit or loss or the statement of comprehensive income. And if you look at the statement, we have uh, the extract of the income tax. And remember, this is the income tax for the current year uh, that is recorded under the income statement. We have <coughs> the goodwill that was written off amounting to a thousand rand. Then we have a finance cost of five thousand rands. And we do have investment income of five of eight thousand five hundred. Then after we have profit uh, before taxation. Then after we have dividends that were declared and paid amounting to twenty thousand rands. And gross revenue meaning before any deductions we have two hundred thousand rands. Remember this is our sales in other words, uh, which is gross revenue. 200,000 rands for the current year. And I'm focusing only on the current year because uh, the income statement is the performance of the current year. There is no necessity of the comparison of the expenses of the previous years and the current year and also incomes. We focus mainly on the current year. Now, uh, these are important when we respond in our requirements. We are provided with the additional information. Then after all the adjustments, after the adjustments, we are given the requirements, and these are very important to master very well. And the first requirement says that we are to calculate, uh, or we must, we are required to do the calculation for the amount that is paid to suppliers and employees. And I want to highlight this amount that is paid to suppliers and employees that means in this note our main focus is to calculate the total cash that is paid to suppliers and employees that means if an amount is not a payment to supplier or employees we don't need that amount to be in this note so the main focus that need to be in our mind is uh, the knowledge of the fact that the amount must be a payment to a supplier or employees. If not, we don't need that amount. If it is a payment to a supplier or employee, then we need that amount. So the second part is the, uh, the statement of cash flows for the year that end on the 30th of June, 2007. So in this question, we are not required to do the uh, reconciliation note first. And in the next question, my intention is to do the reconciliation note and the cash flow. So I'll look at the question that has the reconciliation and the cash flow because there are other dynamics that I want to explain to students with regard to the understanding of what the reconciliation of cash generated from operation means. What is it? 
so that we understand how to record in it. Now that we have the requirements and we know what we are required, I uh, then have already drawn kind of a skeleton of a statement of cash flows for the year that end on 30 June 2007. We start with the cash effect of operating activities, which used to be called cash flow from operating activities. And the second one is cash effect of investing activities, which used to be called cash flow from investing activities. The last one is cash effect of uh, finance activities, which used to be called cash flow from financing activities. Now, uh, then on this blank page, I will be uh, doing my cash paid to suppliers and employees. So this is my note, cash paid to suppliers and employees. Cash paid to suppliers and employees. To suppliers with the R and employees. So this is the note that we are doing. And I want to uh, highlight the reason why I have done the rough draft of the statement of cash flow. It is for the simplicity of transferring the amounts. So the minute I record the adjustments, I will be pasting them to where they're supposed to be recorded. Now we know that in the cash pay to suppliers, we start with the revenue or the gross revenue which in this case it is our incomes our revenue they amount to 200,000 rands then we know that this note says um, net profit before tax we say less net profit before tax we say less net profit before tax and our net profit before tax was provided uh, in our information which was extracted from the statement of comprehensive income net profit before tax it is 38400 rands it is 38400 rands now after we have deducted this it will give us the difference which is 200000 rands 200000 rands minus 38,400. It gives us 161,600. And we call this uh, net expenses and cost of sales. This will be our net expenses and cost of sales. And I want to explain this in details now. And cost of sales. Uh, what I want to explain the meaning of this amount. What does this mean when you have this one sixty one thousand six hundred, and what will happen after that? So I want to dwell more on that, ex highlighting it and explaining it in different ways so that you can have a full understanding of exactly what we are doing. Now. Uh, remember the focus is on explaining the amount of 161,600 which is net cash expenses or net expenses and cost of sales. Now in doing that I want to bring your attention uh, to what we call uh, the income statement because the cash paid to suppliers and employees is extracted from the income statement. So I just want to do a rough draft of the income statement or statement of profit or loss. Let me just say profit uh, or loss statement. We know that we will normally have our sales and we'll have our cost of sales. Uh, let us say random figure for sales, it is 2 million. Cost of sales, uh, 1 million. I don't want the uh, same numbers. Let us say 900,000. Then we will have our gross profit as 1,100,000 rands. This will be our gross profit. I'm just using my own random numbers to explain uh, the cash pay to suppliers to you. Then we'll normally have our other incomes and I want to just have any random income, uh, rent income, it can be any other income. Rent income, just a random figure of 20,000. 
uh, another normal income profit on sale of asset profit on sale of asset uh, let us say we sold an asset and made a profit of 10,000 then after we'll have to say less expenses I'm just using this explanation I want to give the numbers in front of you less expenses and expenses we can have wages we can have wages of 50,000 rands. We know that expenses will be negative. Uh, we'll have water plus electricity. Uh, 50,000 rands. Oh, that will be too much. 1,000 rands. Then after we have, let me think of any other expense. There's another or depreciation we have our depreciation depreciation 70,000 rands we have credit loss and we know that credit loss it is bad debts 5,000 rands we will have another expense that is called finance cost finance cost which is interest expense and I want to draw the line here so that my expenses uh, don't include the finance cost but it is still an expense finance cost of uh, 8,000 rands then after this this will give us profit for the year which is profit before tax in other words this will be our profit for the year or profit before tax so now what will happen we will have the total of the expenses here let me calculate my expenses it will be a total of 50,000 rands plus 1,000 rands plus 70,000 rands plus 5,000 rands so that means my expenses will be 126,000 rands then now when we are calculating the profit uh, before tax it will be one million one hundred thousand rands mm, plus the incomes remember twenty thousand rands plus the income of thirty thousand rands equals minus hundred and twenty six thousand rands minus 8,000 rands of the finance cost. Remember, the finance cost was not included in the total expenses. So we'll have 996,000 rands. So this is our profit for the year. Now we know that when we do reconciliation, remember that again, so when we do cash paid to suppliers and employees, we say revenue, meaning our sales, minus and um, profit before tax which is profit for the year before tax this will give us our net expenses as 161,000 rands so we have that at the back of our minds so let me go there and show you what now does this mean now we are doing the reconciliation based on my own example we'll say our sales or revenue and our sales it is two million minus profit before tax profit before tax it is 996,000 rands now we get to the amount of 996,000 yes the one that is correct there then we do the calculations and we say 2 mi or minus 2 million we get to an amount of 1 million and four thousand one million and four thousand we can see that this is our net expenses and cost of sales net expenses and cost of sales this is the amount now if we say our net expenses and cost of sales are this amount let us go and verify if they are really this amount because we have all the numbers in my scenario that are provided all the numbers are there so I want to calculate the amount of cost of sales, the amount of my expenses, 
and the amount of my expenses because this is my net expenses and cost of sales. Now I do have all the expenses and cost of sales, but I need to do a physical count now where I'm counting my expenses and cost of sales. Cost of sales, uh, it is 900,000 rands. My total expenses, which is number two, 126,000. And my other expense, which is number three, finance cost, it is 8,000 rands. So I need to calculate all these expenses and see how much do I get. I have 8,000 rands plus 126,000 rands uh, plus 900,000 rands. Now it gives me 1 million and 34,000 rands. That means all my expenses and cost of sales together, they give me an amount which I want to write it here an amount of 1 million, 1 million and 34,000 rands. 1 million and 34,000 rands. This is the expenses plus cost of sales. But in the calculation we have calculated, we see that our net expenses and cost of sales, they are 1 million and 4,000. They are less than the amount that I have calculated physically because I've done the physical count, individual count of my cost of sales and expenses, which is 900,000 rands plus 126,000 rands plus 8,000 rands. That means my expenses and cost of sales, they are an amount of 1 million and 34,000 rands. But when I go to my reconciliation note and I say sales minus profit before tax, I get an amount of 1 million and 4,000 rands and it's less than 1 million and 34,000 rands. That means there must be a problem now. Uh, that is the problem that I want to make it very clear to you. If we say the correct expenses and cost of sales, 1 million and 34,000 rands minus 1 million and 4,000 rands. If I deduct the two, how much do I get? I get 30,000. Let me just write the 30,000 here. The difference is 30,000 rands. Why there's a difference of 30,000 rands is because this difference comes from the other incomes. Here the total of our other incomes. Our other incomes total it is 30,000 rands. That means in this case our incomes have reduced our expenses. Because our expenses now they are 1 million and 34,000 rands. And that is the correct amount of the incomes sort of the expenses and cost of sales. Our expenses are 1 million and 34,000 rands, but because of the incomes that we have deducted, and allow me to say deducted, because incomes are positive and expenses are negative, this led to our net expenses and cost of sales to be less by the amount of the income that was recorded in the income statement, which totaled to 30,000 rands. So now that is why when we do cash paid to suppliers and employees, uh, incomes are added. That is why now we'll have to say uh, rent income, we add back the rent income. We need to add back the rent income, which is an amount of 20,000 rands. And also we need to add the profit profit on sale of the asset, on sale of the asset. And if we add these two, which is 20,000 rands and the 10,000 rands, and the total now of our expenses and cost of sales will be correct, meaning it will be the actual amount of the cost of sales, 900,000 rands plus 126,000 rands and plus 8,000 rands. So now the reason why we are adding the incomes under the cash paid to suppliers and employees. It does not mean a rent income is a cash that is paid to suppliers or employees. It is because our incomes, they have reduced, uh, our, pro, uh, they have reduced our expenses. Why am I saying income reduced expenses? It's because in simple terms, if let us say we have an income uh, of zero, just want to simplify this. If we have income of zero rent and we have expenses, this is just further explanation. We have an expense of 100 rand. 
That means our net, remember expenses being negative. Now, assuming I'm doing the income statement, then our net expenses will be an amount of 100 rand. And that is very simple, straightforward. So it will be an amount of 1,000 rand. I put another zero there. Now, if our income increases from zero uh, to uh, 100 rand, and our expenses they remain minus 1000 do you see that our net expenses will decrease to 900 why the expenses will decrease to 900 because the increase in the income will decrease the net take note will decrease the net expenses because incomes will be positive and expenses are negative that means it is uh, income minus expenses meaning our expenses are always decreased by the incomes so now i think this is very 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 clear now and again if in this scenario our income uh, increased to 500 and our expenses remain the amount of 1000 we see that now our net expenses will decrease to 500 but we know that our expense in total is an amount of 1000 why are they decreasing in these cases? It's because we have the two beast of these incomes. Remember, once again, if we don't have any of these incomes, that means there's zero income, there's zero income, our expenses will be the correct amount that they were recorded or that they are recorded. So now that is why in this case, when we do the cash paid to suppliers and employees, the incomes must be added because we want to bring back our expenses to their original amount before the incomes had a negative effect on our expenses. Now, the reason why incomes have negative effect on the expenses is because expenses are negative and incomes are positive. So by default, when positive goes up, then expenses in terms of the net of the expenses against incomes, it will be a decrease. So, and I, I hope I'm making myself very clear on that. So, this is where I want to end when it comes to, to, to the net incomes and, and so the net expenses and the profit uh, on the sale and the rent income. So, that is the reason why now this must be added under our cash paid to suppliers when we do the cash paid to suppliers or employees. So I just wanted to give you that link. I will be showing you this as I will be continuing and responding to the question uh, doing the cash paid to suppliers and employees. So I'll come back and explain this also so that we get the full understanding. Now, we know that we have our cash paid to suppliers and employees. And we have calculated the net expenses and cost of sales. And we know that this amount is underestimated, meaning this amount must be increased by the amount of the incomes that were recorded in the income statement. Meaning we need to go and check in the income statement if was there any other income. Yes, we can see that there is an investment income and this investment income, it is an amount of uh, 8,500. And now we need to take this into account and know that this must be taken into consideration. But we don't start with the investment income. And also if there's a profit that was made on the sale of the asset, this must be recorded. Now the next item here will say items not involved in cash flow. So we start with the items that are not involved in the cash flow. Items not involved in the cash flow items not involved in the cash flow not involved uh, not or not involved in cash flow not involving a uh, cash flow that means we are focusing now on items that do not involve cash flow where now there's no flow of cash we in other words we are speaking of the non-cash items. Let me just put in simple terms. We are speaking of what you call non-cash items. Non-cash items. So I can start with the non-cash items or any other items. Other our non-cash items, 
we know that there will be depreciation, there was the write down of goodwill, there might be a profit or loss on the sale of an asset. So let me just leave the four bullet point there. Then after we will have non-operating items. We'll have non-operating items. Operating, operating items. Non-operating items, they include investment income. And our investment income, we know that this is the investment income that must be added back. Investment income of 8,500 rands. The reason why we're adding, we know that because the income has reduced our net expenses. And now let me read now all the adjustments. And as I'm re reading the adjustments, I will be recording accordingly. Recording accordingly. Now we do have, uh, first of all, let me just highlight first the goodwill that was written off, which is a non-cash item. Goodwill write off. Uh, record that goodwill write off goodwill write or return off now the question is do we add the goodwill or do we subtract the goodwill in the amount of 1000 remember this is the total of the expenses and the total of the cost of sales now our main target is to calculate the cash that was paid to suppliers and employees. First of all, is a goodwill included in the expenses? The answer is yes, the goodwill is inside there. Why am I saying that? Because this information was extracted from the income statement, meaning the statement of comprehensive income. And we know that a goodwill is a non-cash item that must be recorded in the income statement and has been recorded already in the income statement. So now that means this 1,000 is included uh, in the total of the expenses that were in the income statement or that are in the income statement with a total of 1,600. So the goodwill is inside there. The question is now again, is the goodwill a payment to a supplier or an employee? A goodwill is not a payment to a supplier or an employee. So we don't need it because uh, it is not a payment to a supplier or an employee. Therefore now it must be removed. Why do we remove it? Because it is already included in that 161,000 because all the expenses, cash items and the non-cash item expenses, they were already included in the income statement. So goodwill is not a cash paid to suppliers and employees. So we don't need it. We must remove it from the total of 161,600. So that is the reason why now the goodwill will have to be uh, not taken into account. Let us look for another item that is uh, probably the, in the income statement. We have another item that is called finance cost. Finance cost, it is uh, an amount of 5,000 rands. Finance cost is an amount of 5,000 rands, the third one. Our finance cost, we know that finance cost is a non-operating item. That means an interest on the loan has nothing to do with the operation of the business. That's why it's under non-operating uh, items. Otherwise, there is cash that is involved. Now, again, is the 5,000 of the finance cost included in the total expenses and cost of sales? Yes, because finance cost is an income statement item. That means it was included under these expenses. Then the question comes again, is an interest expense a payment to a supplier or an employee? No, we are just paying the loan. This is not a payment to an employee and it's not a payment to our suppliers. So if the 5,000 is not a payment to employees or suppliers, but it is included here, that means we need to remove it because we don't need it because the target of this note is to get to the total of the cash that was paid to suppliers or employees. So that is the reason why we remove the finance cost because it is there and we don't need it. Why don't we need it? Because it is not a payment to a supplier or either an employee. So let me look for another 
uh, income statement item that is or, or that was already recorded. We have dividends that is not an ex income statement item, but statement of uh, changes in equity. So these are the items that uh, were paramount so far before recording anything in the adjustment. The investment income, finance cost, and the write down of the goodwill. So now I can do the adjustments that have been presented to us. It says first that <coughs> on the 28th of February 2007, 10,000 ordinary shares were issued. And we don't know at what price were these uh, dividends issued. Let me first read the second adjustment to see if there is no further adjustment regarding the issue of the shares. Uh, ordinary specifically. On the 1st of June 2007, 10,000 redeemable preference shares. So now these are the preference shares. That means this is the only transaction that has to do with the ordinary shares. Let me go and look at uh, the information that we have. Our ordinary stated capital or ordinary share capital. In the previous year, it was 140,000 rands. And in the current year, it is how much? 162,000 rands. That means our ordinary shares increased from 140,000 rands up to 162,000 rands. That means there is 22,000 rands increase in our capital, ordinary capital. Our capital increased by how much? 22,000 rands. Remember, the assumption is that uh, this was uh, cash, obviously. If we issue shares, people, they buy shares for cash and we receive money. So now this money was received because of financing activities. This was received because of financing activities. Remember now, under our cash flow uh, from financing activities or cash flow or effects of cash flow from financing activities, our focus is on the in uh, items that or cash that was received because uh, of financing the business. So now, meaning this will go to our cash flow or cash effect of financing activities. And how, what will be the name for this? It will be proceeds from the issue of, sale, of shares. Proceeds from issue of shares. That means we receive money because shares were issued. And this will be 22,000 rands. Proceeds from the issue of shares. Proceeds from the issue of shares. And it's very important to specify that it's ordinary shares because this was an issue of ordinary shares just for purpose of space, but specify that it is really ordinary shares. Now remember, cash effect of uh, financing activities. We are referring to the loan, the issue of shares, uh, the third one could be debentures. So those are the main items that will affect uh, your financing activities, meaning that means when the company wants to raise their capital, or the, yes, they can borrow money, which will be used for the operation of the business, or they can issue shares or debentures. So these are the items that will be taken into account. Please don't forget that if there was a share issue cost, the, the, the share issue cost will have to be deducted uh, from the amount of 22,000 rands. But in this case, we don't have the share issue cost. So the first adjustment is covered and we recorded in the cash flow statement. And again, guys, it is very important to record the transactions to where they're supposed to be recorded immediately so that you don't have to be wandering around and uh, looking for figures when you're supposed to be compiling your cash flow statement. Now, number two says, on the 1st of June 2007, 10,000 redeemable preferences were redeemed at par. That means they will tell us, uh, we'll have to know, in, in other words, uh, how much was the value of them or the issue price of the shares. The preferences were issued at one round. That will be at par. Previous year, we had 25,000. Current year, we have 15,000. And the difference, it is 10,000 rands. Now remember, we issued 10,000 or we redeemed 10,000. If even if you say one run time by 10,000 preference share that were redeemed, it will still give you 
the same amount of the 10,000 rands. Now we have redeemed these preferences. Remember, I said to you that under cash effect of finance activities, we focus on shares, on loan and debentures. That is the only item that I want to see here. I don't want to see the proceed of an asset here. No, 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 no. Only three major things. The shares, it will be ordinary shares or preference shares. It could be the redemption. It could be the issue. Uh, it could be debentures. Those are the only major three items that are normally here. Now, remember, this was positive, the previous one. Don't forget why. Because money was received. We issued shares and people bought shares and they paid money to buy shares and we received that money but now under the redemption of preferences we know that the redemption is when the company is paying uh, the shares back to the is giving the amount of the capital back to the preference shareholders redemption of preferences redemption of preference shares now the redemption of preferences the amount is 10000 rands and money is going out of the business and it is given to the preference shareholders giving back the capital to the preference shareholders then we go slowly again to another example that we have and this other example it is um, number or exercise or uh, information number 3 it says the following transactions regarding furniture took place during the month of or during the year 2007. It says now furniture to an amount of 5,500 was purchased. That means we bought furniture that amounted to 5,500. Now if we buy furniture, remember this is an asset, meaning it goes to cash effect of investing activities remember guys we only invest in assets I want to highlight that we only invest in assets we don't invest in any other thing we only invest in assets so that means here we will say acquisition of furniture so now that means under investment we are dealing here with assets acquisition of furniture that means the sale of an asset, the purchase of an asset must be recorded under investing activities. Remember, if we buy an asset, cash will go out of the business. And now that we bought an asset, I then now want to open a ledger account. A ledger account for furniture where we'll expand further on the furniture ledger account. Now we know that our furniture at cost is an asset and this asset increases on the debit side like any other asset we'll have an opening balance of the furniture here on the debit side and the opening balance and the closing balance will be on the credit side balance carried down of this uh, furniture now we look for the information extracted from the financial statements regarding the furniture there we do have furniture at cost and in the previous year, the furniture cost uh, amounted to 36,800 rands. So we'll have that as an opening balance of the furniture, 36,800 rands. Then we record the closing balance, 36,800 rands. Opening balance. We look for the closing balance of furniture at cost. Closing balance 19,500 rands. The closing balance it is 19,500 rands. And we know that there was a furniture that was bought during the year, and the cost of the furniture was 5,500 rands. Remember, the opening balance is before the purchase took place, but the closing balance is after the purchase of the furniture 5.5 has taken place. Now, we have covered uh, this first part of the furniture that was bought now i want to highlight the fact that if there's no other transaction regarding furniture we can close off the furniture ledger account and say 36,800 or balance 36,800 plus 5,500 it gave us 42,300 
if we say minus 19,500, that will indicate that there must have been a furniture that costed us 22,800 that must have been sold on the, on the credit side. But we can't say that so far because there are still other adjustments to be taken into account. But if there was no other adjustment to be taken into account, then we'll know that there was a disposal of furniture that costed the business 22,800 rands. But it is not the case because there are still other adjustments regarding the furniture. Now let us go and remember now the furniture that was bought for 5.5 has been now accounted on the cash flow and we have recorded that 5,500 under our investing activity as outflow of money, which is the purchase of the furniture for cash 5,500 rands. Then let us go to the second uh, transaction regarding furniture. They say furniture with the cost price of how much? Of 800 rands and an accumulated depreciation of 700 was written off. That means the carrying value of this furniture must have been 100 rand. Why am I saying that? Because the cost price of the furniture, it is 800 minus the accumulated depreciation of the furniture, which is 700. That means the carrying amount of this furniture, it is uh, 100 rands. So now this 100 rand, remember, it is uh, the value of the furniture at the date the furniture was written off that means this furniture was not sold it was removed and written off it did not have any value to for it to be sold so now in this case the whole hundred rand becomes a loss because we had a furniture that had a cost price of that had a value of 100 rands and we did not sell it and there was no money that was received that means the whole carrying amount in this case becomes a loss. If we sold the furniture, we'll have to look at the selling price. We say selling price vice versa or selling price versus uh, the carrying value. Therefore, now we'll determine if have we made a, a loss or a profit on the sale of the furniture. But in this case, there was no sale. We just wrote it off. Therefore, now the full 100 rand becomes a loss. Now, remember once again. The loss of 100 rand is recorded in the income statement because all expenses are to be recorded in the income statement, meaning there is a loss that has been recorded somewhere in the income statement. And please take note that we are provided with the extract of the items that were taken from the income statement. That means other items of the income statement or other transactions, such as the loss of 100 rand, it was not extracted. It does not mean that it was not recorded. So the 100 rand was recorded in the income statement as a loss. Then now that means if the 100 rand was recorded in the income statement as a loss, that means it is included under our expenses because this is our net expenses and cost of sales. That means under this 161,600, we do have an amount of 100 rand that is included there. And this amount was a loss on the write down of uh, the furniture. Now, the question is a loss on the write down of the furniture, is it a cash paid to suppliers or employees? The answer is no. There is no cash involved there. And a loss is not a payment of money to a supplier or an employee. That means the loss on the write down of furniture is a non cash item that is not supposed to be part and parcel of the expenses that were paid to suppliers or employees because it is not a payment to a supplier or either employee. Therefore, now we write here as furniture write down. Furniture write down. Furniture write off. I used this word very much of write uh, down. Furniture return off. Our furniture is written off. And the 100 rand is included here under our expenses, net expenses. And we don't want it there because the amount of 100 rand is not a payment to suppliers or employees. Remember, guys, please keep this in your mind. You must always ask yourself, is this amount included in that 161,600? That's what you must ask yourself first. Is it included there? 
The answer is yes, it is included. Is it supposed to be there? The answer is no. Why is it not supposed to be there? Because it is not a payment to a supplier and it is not a payment to employee. So we don't need it. We must remove it out of our expenses and our cost of sales. Because it's not a payment to a supplier or an employee. So we, we have dealt with that. Now remember the cost of the finisher was amounting to how much? To 800. That means now under our finisher ledger account, we need to de-recognize the finisher that was uh, written off. Meaning now on the credit side of the finisher, we need to write the cost of the finisher that uh, was written off. Therefore now the amount of the finisher that was written down is an amount of 800 rands. There on the credit side, the cost of the furniture that was written off, it is 800 rands. Now we need to write the full detail, uh, disposal of furniture. But it's not the real disposal, but the perfect word is uh, disposal, uh, not disposal. The perfect word will not be disposal of furniture, but the perfect word will be the write down of furniture. So in other words, it will be furniture written down. Furniture written down. Remember, if it was disposed, uh, it will be disposal. Furniture written down. Or written off. I like the word written down, but it should be written off. So we have sorted that one again. And I want to repeat this, uh, 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 which I did before. 36,800, which is the debit side, plus 5,500, which is the furniture that was bought during the year. It gives us 42,300, which is the total 42,300. That means uh, the difference that we find, if it falls on the credit side, and there's no other transaction regarding furniture, that will mean that there must be another furniture that was sold during the year at the cost price of the difference. Minus 19,500 minus 800. That means there's a possibility that there was another furniture that was sold with the cost price uh, of 22,000 rands. I don't know, let me just write the figure and leave it there hanging. Now the balancing figure will tell us how much is the furniture cost that was sold again. Now, if there was no other furniture transaction, then we'll deal with that. It will be this amount, disposal of furniture. That means there's a possibility that another furniture costing 22,000 must have been uh, sold. But we don't know yet. Let us look at the next information. <coughs> Next information, now I want to highlight this again before I proceed. There is no cash involved here. We did not sell the finish and got any money. We just wrote it off. So hence this does not affect cash flow because there was no cash that flow in or out of the business because of this transaction. Finish was just recognized and written off. So we have recorded this under the ledger account and we have recorded the loss of 100 rand in this cash paid to suppliers and employees and we removed it because this loss or this write down of furniture or loss on the write down of furniture is uh, is not a cash that was a payment to a supplier or an employee so we removed it we go to the third bullet point it says furniture with a carrying amount of how much 3,200. Remember, this is carrying amount. Carrying amount, it is the value of the asset at that point in time. Finisher with the carrying amount was sold for how much? For 8,000. That means 8,000 is uh, the selling price. 8,000 is the selling price. The amount we sell an asset for is called proceeds. The amount we sell an asset for is called proceeds. That means it is the amount that we received when the asset was sold. In other words, proceeds is an amount that was received when asset was sold or an amount that is received, uh, yes, when something is sold. 
now uh, in other words we can go straight now to our income statement because we received money from the sale of the asset therefore now we can go straight to the income statement under investing uh, activities why investing activities because this is an asset and under investing activities we are dealing with the assets here i want to highlight that we deal with the assets here here we deal with shares we deal here with the loans and we deal here with the debentures these are the major three things that we normally deal with here is shares and investments want also to highlight that investments if you have a long-term investment or a short-term short-term investment this is where we will be so now here we have proceeds on disposal of furniture meaning the amount we received when the furniture was disposed the amount is eight thousand that means we received eight thousand and it must be recorded as positive to indicate that this cash came into the business and i want to highlight that this is in the bank account take note we received the money and it was recorded in our bank account so now hence we, the reason why we record in cash flow is because there's money of eight thousand that came into the business so we are acknowledging the eight thousand under our cash flow and we are saying this cash flow was received because of an investing activity item that means because of an asset that was sold in this case uh, which is uh, the furniture so now let me proceed a little bit further in the same transaction now and try to expand on it a little bit further now the furniture had a value of 3.2 meaning the carrying value was 3.2 and we sold it at a price that is more than its carrying value that means we must have made a profit on the sale of this furniture now let us look at the profit side the profit will be 8000 which is the selling price minus 3200 that means uh, uh, 8000 8000 runs minus 3200 that means we made a profit of 4800 now i want to highlight the fact that the profit of 4800 is a non cash item i want to highlight that it's a non cash item there is no money that is involved in this 4.8 we have already recorded the 8000 under the proceeds on the disposal of the furniture and the entire amount of 8000 is recorded there and we know that the profit is also inside that 8000 i want to stress that that was very very important to uh, be mindful of that the 8000 is received as cash and we have recorded this as cash that came into the business because of an investing activity meaning because of the sale of this asset called furniture we received money which is called proceeds and that is eight thousand why am i emphasizing this is because after we got the profit of four thousand eight hundred this is not money received are we clear we received eight thousand we did not receive four thousand eight hundred but we know that the amount of 4,800 is a profit and the profit of 4,800 is already included under the proceeds. Why am I highlighting that is because the 4,800 is an income statement item, but it's not a cash flow item. That means uh, there is no cash that flow into the business because of this transaction. It is a non cash item. It is a non cash item. So the 8,000 that we see here, 4.8 that we see here is a non-cash item. We don't receive any extra amount when this 4.8 is recorded. It is for the purpose of the income statement that we record the 4,800 as, um, as a profit, but there is no money that is involved. So now in other words, where do we then record this? We need to know that it will be recorded or it is recorded under our cash paid to suppliers and employees that means now we know remember we know remember let me bring you back to uh, the first introduction remember we had a profit on the sale of an asset remember this ten thousand is the one that reduced 
is the one that reduced our net expenses and cost of sales. And we said the reason why our net expenses and cost of sales are less is because of the 30,000, if you remember, the 30,000 of these two. Hence, I said now, the profit on the sale of an asset, which is seen as an income without cash flow, it is reducing the expenses. Let me just bring you to, to the same scenario in a different approach. Let us say we have a profit on the sale of an asset. Profit on disposal. We sell an asset and we make a profit of zero rent. That means the selling price was equal to the carrying value. Profit is zero. We have expenses. We have expenses and we are in the income statement. Remember, hence expenses must be negative. We have expenses of a thousand rand. How much will be the net expenses now? Our net expenses, meaning incomes minus the expenses, will give us the same 1,000 rands. Now, if we go to the second scenario, let us say we make a profit of 300 now on sale of an asset, and we have expenses of 1,000. We can see that our net expenses will now decrease to an amount of 700. That means, in other words, our net expenses are being reduced by the increase in the profit. That is why now in this case, the profit on the sale of an asset must be recorded as positive in the cash paid to suppliers and employees. Now it does not mean we need, if it does not mean this is a, a profit on disposal of furniture, on disposal of furniture. Remember, guys, this does not mean that a profit on the disposal of the asset is a cash pay to suppliers or employees. No, that does not mean that. It just means that our incomes, meaning any other income and profit, they reduce our net expenses. And I want to highlight the fact that we have seen that these net expenses uh, were reduced by the profit. And if we added the 20000 and the 10,000, it will give us the 1 million and 34,000 rands, which is the correct amount of the expenses and cost of sales. When we calculated them manually, if you remember, I calculated the I said 900,000 rands, and I added my expenses, which is 126,000, and I added the 8,000 rands. So, in other words, when we add back the incomes, we want to get to our expenses, which is 1 million and 34,000. Then after we say, out of these total expenses, were they all paid to suppliers? If the answer is no, then we need to remove the ones that were not a payment to suppliers or either employees. So guys, I hope I'm making sense on what I'm saying uh, to give you more clarity on uh, such type um, of analysis. Now we go to the next one. Uh, in fact, the same scenario because there's still something to be recorded there. Now, we don't know the cost price of this furniture. We know the carrying value. We know the selling price. We don't know the cost price. But we know that the cost price is equal to carrying value plus accumulated depreciation. That means if we can get to the depreciation of this furniture, we add it back to the carrying value, it will give us the cost price. Why am I saying this? Because the carrying value equals cost price minus accumulated depreciation. So that means uh, the cost price is equal to carrying value plus accumulated depreciation. If you make uh, the, let us say, carrying value, plus accumulated depreciation equals cost price. So I took the accumulated to cross over the equal sign. So that's why I'm saying, if we can get accumulated depreciation for this asset, we add it to the carrying value. It will give us the cost price of the asset. But we have done that already in the ledger account because the ledger account has taught us that the cost of the asset which was disposed that we don't know, it is an amount of 22,000 rands. You see, they are sitting there. So we know that the cost price of the furniture that was sold amounted to 22,000 rands. 
but you can also discover this through the ledger account called accumulated depreciation. That means if we can now get to the accumulated depreciation of the asset that was sold, then we'll know the cost price. Accumulated depreciation on furniture. Accumulated depreciation on furniture. And our accumulated depreciation has an opening balance. And it also does have a closing balance. And we know that on the debit side, we record depreciation for the current year. And on this side, we know that we record uh, furniture right of the accumulated depreciation for the furniture that was written off. We have furniture right off. And the accumulated depreciation for the furniture that was written off amounted to 700 rands. If your memory still serves you there. The accumulated depreciation for the furniture that was written off amounted to 800 rands. Sorry, to 700 rands, in fact. Now, we are clear with that we need to record the opening accumulated and record the closing accumulated depreciation on furniture. Accumulated depreciation specifically on furniture, 32,000 and 13,600 rands. 32,000 opening balance. It is 32,000. 32,000 and 13,600 closing balance. 13,600 closing balance. We need to know the depreciation for the current year. It was not given in the income statement. It must be somewhere in the adjustments. Yes, the last adjustment, they clarify as that depreciation is an amount of 1,000. And that is depreciation for the full year. And now remember, this is for the finisher 1,100. Please be very clear that this is uh, the finisher that we are dealing with. So depreciation for the finisher, it is 1,000 rands. So that means the balancing amount will be on the debit side. And the minute the balancing amount is on the debit side, it will be the accumulated depreciation of the finisher that was disposed at a selling price of uh, 8,000 rands. 32,000 rands plus 1,100 equals 33,100 rands. 33,100 rands minus the debit side. Minus 700 minus 13,600. We get to 18,800. 18,800. This will be disposal of furniture meaning in other words this is disposal of furniture this is the the, the the accumulated depreciation of the furniture that was disposed remember now once again that the dip, uh, the, uh, the furniture that was sold at a certain price of 8000 had a carrying value of how much had a carrying value of 3.2 if you say plus 3200 how much do we get we get to 22000 rands and this is exactly aligned with the same ledger account of the finished cost that ties together. That means correctly, the cost of the disposed finisher is 22,000 rands. Now we have recorded this one uh, in all angles and we are honestly done with the adjustments. The only thing now that we need to do is just to work with the information that we have minus debt and credit then after we're done in all other accounts that we have. Now, let us go there now in, 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 in our, in our uh, statement of financial position. And we look for all other items now that must be taken into account. We need to look at all items that must be taken into account. We look at the depreciation. There is another depreciation that must be accounted for. Because the one that we have is only the one for the finisher. We also do have accumulated depreciation for machinery. Dep uh, this is for machinery. Now, in other words, we need to say previously accumulated depreciation, which is 10,125 minus 20,250 we get to the depreciation as 10,125, which is depreciation for 
uh, furniture only. Then you say plus 1,100. Plus 1,100, which has to be minus 1,100 because signs are the same. It will give us 11,225. That means the total depreciation is 11,225, which will be our total depreciation for all the assets that we have. So now we can record our depreciation now. Our depreciation is 11,225. <coughs> and the question is again, is the amount of the depreciation included in that 161,600? The answer is yes. They did not say it was not recorded. So now, if the 11,225 is the depreciation and is part of our expenses and cost of sales, is it a pay is a depreciation a payment to suppliers and employees the answer is no so we don't need that 11,225 we must remove it from this 161,600 because all that we need is the cash that was paid to suppliers or employees if the cash is not a payment to a supplier or an employee we do not need it there so in other words we remove it except uh, the profit and the incomes we don't remove them but we we just add them back then the last part is the working capital changes last part is the working capital changes working capital changes very 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 easy part again working capital changes under working capital changes we have creditors and inventory creditors and inventory. Now, remember once again, guys, I want to hammer this in your mind. What do we need here? We need a total of the cash that was paid to suppliers and employees. Now, under working capital changes, we don't need debtors, guys. Remember, debtors is not a payment to a supplier or an employee. A debtor is the customer whom we sold inventory on credit to. So, debtors have nothing to do with the payment to suppliers or employees. Now, let us look at the creditors. And after we go to the inventory, let us go there, we do the creditors and the inventory. Now, our creditors, which are trade payables, we do have our creditors. And our creditors, they amount to 60990 and 18,800 in the current year. They are decreasing. Now we have an amount of 60,990 minus 18,800. The minute creditors decrease, that means we paid them 42,190. The minute your creditors are decreasing, that means you paid them. That is why your creditors, meaning liabilities, are decreasing. Now, creditors, they decrease because we paid them. The question is, again, now, is the amount of creditors, which is 42,190, uh, is the amount of 42,190 included in our expenses? The amount of 42,190, is this amount included uh, in this 161,600? Is it included there under the expenses and cost of sales? The answer is no, this is not included. Why? Because a payment to a supplier is not an expense and it's not a cost of sales item. So that means the amount of 42,190, it is not included there. Then another question, is it a payment to a supplier or an employee? Yes, we are paying our suppliers. Hence, our suppliers are decreasing. So now if this amount is a payment to suppliers, that's what we need. So we need to add it back because at the end of the day, we need the total of the cash that was paid to suppliers or, or end employees. So this must be added because we need this total. Now we come to our inventory and we look for the inventory. Now our inventory uh, in the extract of the statements of financial position, we see that we do have inventory and our inventory is appearing there at an amount of 100 uh, is 
690 uh, does erase here to get more clarity of the amount of the inventory inventory we see the inventory is it was 281 it decreased to 245,000 281,000 let us look at the decreased amount it is 281,690 uh, minus 245,625 how much the decrease the inventory decreased by 36,065 rands 36,065 this is the decrease in the inventory now first question again or another question when does the inventory decrease or under which circumstances will the inventory decrease inventory will decrease when we sold it so let us record the general journal so that i can give you more clarity when we sell inventory remember we debit our bank if it's sold for cash and i'm using the perpetual inventory system let us say we debit bank 36065 ah no this is not the correct amount uh, let us say we have 40,000 because this is the selling price. Then after we credit our sales, we sold inventory and the selling price of this inventory is 40,000. We record this is the revenue side. In the perpetual, what do we do? We debit our cost of sales. Remember, I'm taking not account of uh, output VAT. We debit cost of sales and we credit our inventory. We credit our inventory by how much? 36,065. This is the cost price. 36,065. In other words, now we are recording the cost of the inventory, meaning the cost of sales. If you see in this case, our cost of sales, they increase when inventory is decreasing. That means when we sell inventory, and we have less inventory and we can see that inventory is decreasing when we sell inventory our cost of sales are increasing now that means at the point of sale our inventory will decrease and our cost of sales will at the same time uh, decrease now let me explain this to you in the income statement that i've done in other words now the amount of the cost of sales that i have here the 900,000 rands this amount include the decrease in the inventory of 36,065 which is because of the sale of the inventory that means when we sell inventory we credit inventory and we debit our cost of sales and we know that cost of sales will affect our income statement so now that means the amount of 900,000 rands it included 36,065 because that is the cost of sales at the point this uh, transaction took place I hope I'm making sense on that. Now, that means in the income statement, we have the amount of 36,065. That means if this is our cost of sales, that therefore means that the amount of 1 million, uh, go with me here, the amount of 1 million and 4,000, it is including the cost of sales. Are you clear with that? It includes the cost of sales of how much? The cost of sales of 36,065. When the inventory was sold, cost of sales were debited, and they the cost of sales were debited. That means in the income statement, you have more cost of sales whenever we sell inventory. That means the 36,065 is included again there. Now that means again uh, in the calculation, yes, in this 36,000 and, uh, and uh, 4,000, we have the 36,065 included there. The question now that I must ask you is the amount of 36,065 a payment to suppliers or employees? It is not a payment to a supplier and either an employee. Why am I saying that? Because we have sold inventory here. This is sales. We sold inventory. Debited bank. Remember, if it was sold on credit, you would have said debtors. It doesn't matter which one we consider. We would have debited debtors here if it was sold on credit debtors and now the fact that we sold inventory even if it's for cash it does not mean that money is a payment to a supplier yes we received money because the inventory was sold and we acknowledge that this money is because of the sales and we say debit the cost of sales and we credit our inventory now inventory is decreasing when we sell it i want to highlight guys this 
invent is decreasing when we sell it. But the decrease in the inventory is not a payment to a supplier or an employee. That means a decrease in the inventory which in turn increases, take note, which in turn increases our cost of sales in the income statement. And we have seen that a decrease in the inventory is a debit in the cost of sales which is increasing cost of sales. Remember, cost of sales increase on the debit side. Now we see cost of sales increasing yet there was that is not a cash that is paid to suppliers or employees so in other words uh, the amount of thirty six thousand and sixty five is part and parcel now let me go to the the the, uh, the information that we are dealing with that means this amount of one sixty one six hundred it includes thirty six thousand and sixty five why? Because this is net expenses and cost of sales, meaning the amount of the cost of sales when the inventor was sold, it, it, it is there. The 36,065 is included, but this amount of 36,065 is not a payment to a supplier or an employee. Remember, what do we need at the end of this uh, note? We need the cash that is paid to suppliers and employees. And if there is an amount that is included here, Yet it's not a payment to a supplier or an employee. We don't need it. We must remove it. That is why now the decrease in the inventory of 36,065, it must be recorded as negative. In other words, we are removing it and we are taking it out here. We say that 36,065 is because inventory was sold. And the selling of the inventory is when the inventory goes to the customer and we are selling it. And that is not a payment of money to a supplier. And that is not a payment of the money to an employee. And that money is included in the cost of sales because a decrease in the inventory, the contra interest cost of sales. So we need to remove the amount of the decrease of the inventory. And that will be uh, being removed as 36,065. Now the question is now again, remember the inventory now is decreasing. This was increasing. Let me just explain this one. When the inventory is increasing, what happens? Remember when inventory is increasing, it means we bought more inventory. And when we buy more inventory, whom are we buying the inventory from? We are buying the inventory from the supplier. Then we are paying the supplier in that case. Therefore now, that's why an increase in the inventory will be recorded as a plus because it's a payment to a supplier. We are paying the supplier for the inventory that we have bought from the supplier and we always assume it to be cash. So that is uh, the, 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 the dimension that, um, uh, that I want to bring across to you regarding this. So increase in the inventory, meaning we bought inventory from the supplier and we paid for cash and we are paying the supplier. And when you buy inventory from the supplier, the amount of the pages will not be under our cost of sales and the amount of the pages will not be under our expenses. That means the increase in the inventory, the amount of the increase in the inventory, it is not included here, but we need it. That's why now it will be added because we need a total of the cash that was paid to suppliers or employees. So now after that, uh, you can draw your line there. Uh, please do the calculations. I'm not going to be doing the calculations. Uh, just to save time, 163,700 is the correct amount. Therefore, now let me go and complete uh, my uh, uh, cash flows statement for the year, the year ended 207 June. <coughs> now, we have dealt with this and we go to the cash flow now, really. We know that we start with uh, cash receipts from customers. cash receipts from customers cash receipts from customer or cash receipt from customers we know that cash that is received from customers is opening plus sales minus closing very easy opening of debtors plus closing uh, opening plus sales minus closing our opening of our data, we know that it is an amount of 180,000 rands plus our sales. Sales will be in the income statement, which is our revenue, 
our revenue which is our sales is 200,000 rands plus 200,000 rands minus closing of 150,000 rands. Remember, we assume, guys, that all the sales were made or were made on credit. So, cash received from customers will be 210,000 rands. Then, after we say less cash paid to suppliers, then after we have cash paid to suppliers, cash paid to suppliers. Cash paid to suppliers have shown you that it is 163,700. 163,700. Then after we get to cash generated from operation, 163,700 rands. We get to 66,300 rands. This is very important. Cash is generated from operations. What is it? I will be explaining that in the next video cash generated from operation cash generated from operations i want to highlight this cash that is generated from what from operations that means when we do this reconciliation note anything that is not because of operation we don't need it that's it remember we started there with the profit before tax what do we remove? We remove anything that has nothing to do with the operation. That's the reason. So I'll deal with that and show you all the dimensions and explaining to you why certain items will be eliminated in this cash generated. Why? Because they are not generate. They are not items that have to do with the operation. So anything that has nothing to do, to do with the operation, we remove it. That is. That's it. Simple like that. Depreciation is the non-cash item. And depreciation has a, is a non-cash item, and though it might be related to the operation, it is not the cash. So that becomes non-cash item. But I'll be dealing with the dynamics of the reconciliation in the next video, explaining this note on cash generated from operation in details, so that you understand it very well. Why must you remove other items, and which items to remove, and which items to add? Now we. Go to the next one, which is the five thing that get to be recorded. Yes, only five. It is interest income. There's only five things. It is interest income. And if we do have any other income which is paid, we can record our interest paid, which is normal interest expense. Interest paid. Our interest income, I think it was 8,000. 500 if my memory still serves me we did have the interest income of 8,000 years interest income I want to highlight the fact that The amount that is recorded in the income statement is not the amount that is always received Remember this is the amount that was supposed to be received now if let us say 500 of the interest income was accrued meaning it was not yet received then when we do cash flow, we only record the amount that was received. Then we we'll only record 8,000 here. If there was a 500 that was accrued, but in the income statement, we record the amount that was supposed to be received and we reverse and acknowledge that as it is. But in the cash flow, we deal with the part that was received or the part that went out. So now I'm doing just an example if out of the interest income 500 was accrued let us say they told us that 500 of the interest income was accrued that means if it's accrued meaning it was not yet received yet it was supposed to be received therefore now we will record the 8.5 in the income statement because it was recorded but now in the statement of cash flow we'll only record the amount that was received which is 8000 not uh, the amount that was supposed to be received. Please make sure that you master that accrual. Very important to be mindful of it. Interest expense, once again. This interest of 5,000 is the interest that was supposed to be paid. They can tell you that and say, uh, there was a prepaid interest expense. They tell you in the adjustment. They say, finance cost, there was a prepaid of 1,000. Let us say, part of the interest uh, finance cost 1000 was prepared meaning paid for next year in the income statement 
we will still record the 5,000 that was supposed to be paid. Take note of that. In the income statement, if the 5,000 is the one that was supposed to be paid, we'll still record the 5,000. But in the cash flow, we will have to record the amount that was paid, 6,000. Please be mindful of all these dynamics, guys. This is very important when it comes to the accruals. In the cash flow, we record the amount of cash that went out or that came in. But in the income statement, we record the amount that was supposed to be received or supposed to be paid. But if there is no adjustment and we are silent in cash flow, we assume that the finance cost that is in the income statement was all paid and the income that is in the income statement was all received. But it's not always the case. Now I'll be dealing with those dynamics um, and also in the next video and also uh, clarifying you in details with the practical examples. Now, uh, dealing with that again, we go to the next part of the cash flow. Here we record only five things. Interest income, interest expense. That means interest received and interest paid. Remember, interest income is a similar record to interest received. Then after we have dividends received and dividends paid. Then after that, we don't have dividends received, we only have dividends paid. We have dividends paid. Then after the fifth one is taxation paid. There's only five things. Interest, income or interest received and interest paid. Dividends received and dividends paid and taxation paid. They told us that dividends were paid and they gave us the amount of the dividends that were declared and paid amounted to 20,000 rands. So there's nothing to worry because they told us how much of the dividends that were declared and that were paid. So there's nothing to worry. I'm just erasing this because I was using this to explain some uh, other things uh, regarding the investing activity. Now, uh, continuing on that same note, taxation, we go to taxation. Our taxation, I've just made few adjustments uh, uh, because there was just some typing error there. The opening balance of SARS is 46,000, closing balance is 6,000. What do we do in this case? We say opening plus tax during the year, 46,000 opening balance, plus tax of 14,400. I hope you still remember that the tax expense for the year extracted from the statement of comprehensive income is 14,400 minus closing of 6,000. It gave us 54,400. And I want to highlight the fact that tax is not always serving in opening balance as a liability. 54,400. And I'll be also talking about that in the next class. Then, or in the next video. Then we look at the other assets now. We are done with that other part. We look at the other parts now that were not affected by the adjustments. All the other parts that were not affected now by the adjustments. And we go to another asset that we have. We have uh, accounted for furniture, disposal with that. It's only machinery that we must talk about now. There was no adjustment regarding machinery. And if there's no adjustment, you look at the difference of the previous year and current year, then you will know what had taken place. Previous year, fin uh, machinery, we had 50,000. 625 current year we have 75,000 uh, 625 that means we bought machinery uh, that costed the company 25,000 and we assume that it was bought for cash that is the only assumption we have there's no other assumption we assume that everything was bought for cash so that means under acquisition remember we are under now under investing we invest in assets i said here yeah, investing we deal with assets here yeah. Nothing else. The sale of an asset, the purchase of an asset, only those two things that I want to see here. We can have assets which are called investments. Short-term investments and long-term investments, they are still under assets. So we have acquisition of furniture, so acquisition of machinery. That means we bought machinery. Acquisition of machinery. That means we bought machinery that costed us 25,000 rands. Remember, we always assume cash. We don't assume credit. 
So don't be thinking, what if they say no, we always assume it to be cash. Then now we look for another item uh, that uh, will affect our assets. So remember, we look at the non-current assets and investments. Is there any investment? Yes, there is the investment at the bottom there. They specify investment previously 40,000. Current year, we have more investment. Remember, the more we invest, the more we take money from our business and we, 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 we give to the investor. That means when investment is increasing, our cash is decreasing. So now that is very important. In other words, we have invested more money. When we invest more money, we take money from the business and we give that money to the investor. And we have invested more by 10,000. And this will be acquisition of investment. Acquisition of investment. This is acquisition of investment, 10,000 rands. Now remember I said under investing activities, we look at none, I want to be very specific now, we look at non-current assets, not just any assets. We look at non-current assets plus investments. That's it, non-current assets plus investments. Investments can be non-current and other investments can be current assets, but it will be non-current assets, including non-current investments and short-term investments under current assets. Then after we go to the, uh, uh, the part of cash flow, which is, from, um, which is from finance activities. I said, yeah, we deal with uh, three things, I think so. We deal with shares. Uh, we deal with debentures. Remember, shares are divided into two. They are ordinary and they are preference shares. So it's ordinary and preference shares and debentures. Now we have dealt already with the proceeds from the issue of ordinary shares. We dealt again with the redemption of preference shares. The only one that will be left, if we do have one, it will be that of uh, debentures. Let us look if we do have debentures or not. Let us look if we do have debentures. You need to master, guys, what goes into the cash flow. The minute you know what goes into the cash flow, then it becomes easy for you to answer the questions and where to go uh, when you're done with another uh, part of the cash flow. Now, we are looking for debentures specifically, debentures only. Debentures, there are debentures at the end. We made a sale of debentures. We issued debentures. So let us say, yeah, we made a, a sale of debentures. We issued more debentures. And the debentures that uh, we issued, uh, they amount to an amount of uh, 40,000 rands. 80,000 minus 120 will give you 40,000 rands. That means we issued more debentures. Take note, this is negative, indicating a credit. Debentures are equity. Although debentures can be liabilities, but in this case, so far at your level, debentures are equity and equity increases on the credit side. Now, uh, that has been taken into account. So 40,000 is, 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 is the acquisition of debentures. We issued more debentures and people bought more debentures and we received money from the issue of debentures. So this will be uh, acquisition of debentures. In this case, I, wa I want to use a, a different language. You can say proceeds from the issue of debentures, not acquisition. Proceeds from the, because we issue debentures, they are like uh, shares. We have proceeds, which uh, we can also call that as acquisition. Proceeds from issue of debentures. From issue of debentures. We issued debentures. And the amount that we have issued our debentures for is 40,000 rands. So we received 40,000 rands from the issue of debentures and now uh, this will be the end of the cash flow before we do the closing part and this will give us a total of 52,000 rands financing activities it will be 52,000 rands then we go to the investing activity please know that the total gets to be returned there then we have investing activity please do verify just to the calculations but uh, all the amounts uh, are correctly recorded 
Now we go to the investing activity and we calculate the total. Remember, all the negative figures must be recorded as negative. So this sum will go there and this total will go there. And remember this, we have to draw a line here. And the total of the investing activity is negative 35,000 rands. And now the effect from operating activities, it is negative 46 or 4,600. That is uh, the effect, 63,600, 300, 8.5 positive, 5,000 negative, 420,000. That will be our uh, statement of cash flow. Then now we come to the end, which is uh, the net changes in cash and cash equivalent. This one is very, very, very easy. We just look at the bank that we had. Our bank, if you look at the opening balance, our bank was an overdraft at the beginning. Bank overdraft beginning last year, opening balance negative 11,000. So now our cash at the beginning, it is 11, 11, in negative 11,000. Then our closing is a positive amount. Our closing is a positive amount, 3,900. And I want to explain this dynamics is very, very important to master. It is 3,900. Then we'll get to uh, the net cash and cash equivalent of 14,900. This is very important to what I will explain now regarding this closing balance. Remember, the principle says opening plus closing. Uh, sorry, opening minus closing. Opening minus closing. That is the principle. Our opening is minus 11,000 minus 3,900. Do you see that? Our opening is an overdraft, meaning it's a negative. Therefore, now it becomes negative uh, 11,000. In other words, now we are adding in this case. We have uh, negative 11,000 and negative 3,900, meaning we end up adding and we get 14,900. So that's why now the net change in cash and cash equivalent becomes an amount of 14,900. So please be mindful of that. Keep the basic. Sometimes you can have your opening being positive. If let us say we have opening being a positive amount and closing being negative, it will be 11,000 minus, if it was just normal numbers, both positive, 11,000 minus 3,900. That will be the net cash and cash equivalent when all the figures are positive. If the opening is positive and the closing is negative, we say opening minus and the closing is negative minus 3,900. So now that will be the case which will be plus now negative times by negative, it will be 11,000 plus 3,900 and this will be 14,900. We'll be adding again in that case. But this is the net uh, change in cash and cash equivalent. Guys, with that, uh, thank you very much. Please know that for you to get the same amount, you say minus 4,600, then you say minus uh, that 35,000, and you say plus 52,000. That should give you the same uh, 9, 14,900. Let's just verify that we have 4,600 plus 35,000. I'm saying plus because both of them are of the same sign. 4,600 plus 35,000 minus 52,000. We get, let me just verify, we have, we have 4,600, 4,600 plus 32,000, oh, I wrote this figure very incorrectly, 32,500, not 35,000 there, 32,500. 
that is 32,500. Uh, please just uh, don't worry much about the numbers. I don't want to spend time calculating. Plus 32,500. And if all the details are correct, that's the word for me. Minus 52,000 rands. So that becomes 14,000 for 14,900 rands. So that will be how we get to the same amount that we saw there at the bottom. Now with that, guys, uh, thank you very much. Uh, wait for me for the next video and make sure that you get hold of it. Uh, for, for more information of my videos, please make sure that you subscribe at www.unlockaccounting. No space unlock accounting dot co dot za. That will be the website. There's cost accounting, there's financial accounting, and there's statistics. So that is the website where you get all the videos well structured at a very lower price of 450 per subject for six months, meaning you pay 450 and say 450 once off for a period of six months. Then the second six months, if it's a year subject, you get now uh, to pay another 450. With that, guys, you've been lovely. Thank you very much. I hope you understood something out of this.